thankful, rejoicing, and preparing. And you take that T and that R and that P, you know, uh, if, if you were Texas with TRP, you know, I find out, I don't know why these kids, they just won't write the whole word out. So if I saw TRP, it would be like a trip, you know. So we're going to take a little trip this right. morning. Right. Praise the name of God. Um, because we have to be thankful for the past. Yes. Uh, when Paul wrote this, he was writing this uh, in the midst of the Romans' uh, time. Um, he himself had already been a citizen, even though he was a Jew. So in other words, uh, he became a citizen to the country that he lived in, and he was a Roman citizen, even though he was a Jew. Born in the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised on the eighth day, a Hebrew of Hebrews, praise the name of God. So his credentials were great. He sat at the feet of one of the greatest teachers of that time, named Gamaliel. And he learned the law of God, which is the Mosaic law in the Old Testament. And he knew the law. He practiced the law letter by letter. Him knowing the law caused him not to be able to see Christ as he was. Because Christ did not come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. In other words, there were many people that thought that they understood the law. And when I'm talking the law, I'm not just talking the Ten Commandments. There were many more laws than the Ten Commandments. You go in the Bible, you go in the book of Deuteronomy, you go in the book of Leviticus, you will see that there are more laws than the Ten Commandments. But we found out that even the Ten Commandments, nobody could keep. I, I mean, you might keep five of them, but you're going to mess up five. You might keep eight of them, you might keep nine of them. But you're going to mess one of them up. And, and so, in other words, no, uh, there, there was no room to point fingers like we do today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> I think you hear me, Deke. <laughs> you know, because see, some people will get some things right mm -hmm. and point fingers at other folks. Mm -hmm. Even though the Wim brothers done told us. Sweep around your own front door. Who you trying to? That's right. Yeah, spider webs out there. Ain't even know a, a beehive on your porch right now because you ain't sweeping and ain't look up. In the last two weeks, but you worry about your neighbor house. Yes. When they gonna cut their grass? When you gonna carry your mow over there and help them? <laughs> you wanna talk about it? You got a mow. Bless your neighbor. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Don't talk about it. Help them. You know, when we learn in life, because uh, Paul had to learn this, Paul thought that he was doing God's work yes. by hurting people. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear that? Yes. Uh, by hurting people. And by the time he had his conversion and he met Jesus himself, he, he found out that uh, he was persecuting people for the wrong reason. And I need you to understand, sometimes you don't have to do anything to people. And sometimes you can do stuff to people. But some people don't make up in their mind, they just don't like you. And there ain't nothing you're going to be able to do about that. But you better learn how to live life. So when Paul was writing this, but this was after his conversion and after he realized that he was making a mistake by persecuting the church based on the law and he had to meet Jesus himself. Uh -huh. 
See, sometimes we have to meet God ourselves. No, 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 no. I ain't say nothing about going to church. Because see, some folks think you go to church, you know God. No, that just means you come to church. Some of the meanest people you ever want to meet is on the quiet, in the pulpit, sitting right beside you. Don't you look around. Don't throw it off. Don't look around. Just look straight at me when I say that. Y'all, everybody act like somebody saying, how you know, Pastor? So, when Paul wrote this, he started out with Quinn. He started out and we know. In other words, he made his audience someone that knew what he was talking about. Deacon Austin, he wasn't just talking to anybody. He was talking to believers. He wasn't talking to people that did not have faith. He, he, didn't, he wasn't talking to people that needed to see something before they believed. He was talking to people that were going through a trying time, but he wanted them to understand that if we all know this, that no matter what we're going through, it's going to work together for our good. And I need to understand this morning because when we look at even our life now, and we look back in the past, Deacon Samuel, we have to be thankful if nothing else. Now, our past wasn't everything that we wanted to be. All our eyes wasn't dotted. All the T's wasn't crossed. All our ducks wasn't in a row. But where we are today has a lot to do with the foundation that was laid in the past. Now, now I need to understand, I mean, the past, when we're talking about the past, you're talking about 1863, uh, there wasn't a building, they had a bush hall. In other words, they were, they were over across the street, you know, uh, uh, worshiping God without a, a beautiful building like we got now. Do you understand? During that time, there were buggies and horses. Well, I ain't going to say horses. There were mules. Because you were doing good if you had a horse. Mules. People were walking to church. Now we got three cars in the yard. And instead of coming to church, we go to the car wash. On Sunday morning. Yep. Ain't that so? Yeah. They brought mules. What? Built the foundation. Had faith. What? Wasn't as educated as we are. We got associates, bachelors, masters, doctors. Hallelujah. And we done got so smart and got so much technology that, that we, guess what? We don't put faith first anymore. We count on our knowledge. And we put faith to the side. But the Bible says if you want to please God, you got to walk by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So in other words, you got to hope that God is going to do something in your life even before this door. Right. You got to believe that God is able yes. even before you see it manifest. Yes. There's no need for you to pray to God if you're not going to believe when you pray. Right. Somebody told me, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to pray, you ain't got the word. Right. Say it again and say it again, Perry. And if you're going to worry, ain't no need to pray. And some people have made up in their mind, I'm going to do the word. I'm a word, I'm a word, I'm a word. He said, take no thought for the mark. 
Let me tell you, he said if, if, if the lilies in the valley are red and green, they're beautiful. I can take care of them and I, and I can put a bird in the nest and make sure that bird lives. How much, how much more do you think I will take care of you? He said, you're not able to even count the hairs on your head. You understand? In other words, God knows that much about us. That he knows how much hair we got on our head. And some of us make it a little easier. <laughs> <laughs> just rub it. Just rub it. I'm talking. <laughs> But he said, and we know, so he's talking to somebody that knows God. Yes. They knew something then. And, and, and the faith that they had then calls us to be here. Now it says rejoice in the present. And, and, I, and, 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 I, and I know, I know, because I, I, sometimes it's, uh, it's kind of mine. Uh, blowing because some people say the good old days yeah. mm -hmm. and, and you need to make that you need to clarify what you're talking about yeah. if you look back over history and see where we have come from we have such a, re a resilient spirit yes. we're persistent we're standing through a lot of things that should have taken us out. Uh -huh. And we're still here. Yeah. But it was not just the knowledge, it was not just the education, it wasn't the technology that got us here. Matter of fact, some of the technology that you see now is because of the troubles that we came through. And so they start building a foundation and they start putting stuff in place huh, so that we were able to be where we are today. Huh. If my mother and father didn't do what they did, or my grandmother or grandmother didn't do what grandfather didn't do what they did, huh, I wouldn't be here today. Huh. We wouldn't be here today. Huh. If your mother, your father, your grandmother huh, didn't praise the Lord and worship like they did, huh, you wouldn't be here today. Huh. If some of your mothers and fathers didn't worship God, huh, somebody came into your life huh, that introduced you to Jesus Christ, huh, or introduced you to our Lord and Savior. Huh, and I'm glad about it. Huh. They were preparing the way for you when you get here. Huh. I'm here to tell you, huh, Jesus started preparing the way huh, 2,000 years ago. Huh. He looked at the disciples. Huh. Deacon Roosevelt, he said, huh, who do people say that I am? Huh? They said, thou art Elijah. Huh? You are Moses. Huh? You, you've been reincarnated. Huh? You're John the Baptist. Huh? He said, but who do you say that I am? Huh? They said, you are the Christ, huh? the anointed one. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? And he said, upon the very declaration huh, that y'all know that I'm the anointed one, huh? I'm going to prepare the way for you. Huh? Upon this rock, huh? I'm going to build my church. Huh? And the gates of hell huh, shall not prevail against it. Huh? I came by to tell you, huh? some of you have been going through some hell in your life, huh? but I came by to tell you the gates of 